China-Russian relations have been historically quite close, as the countries have shared the same vision of the need for multipolarity and diversity while looking to counter U.S. dominance. Facing increasing competition from the U.S., China considers promoting regional economic partnerships as a key strategic priority. Moreover, the improvement of China's recent ties with its regional partners has added extra assets to its economic integration. Meanwhile, Russia is also looking to counter U.S. dominance by constructing a multipolar world of equals and fair play. And here the two countries have found each other. China's proposed regional comprehensive economic partnership, which is aimed at further opening up to other countries and speeding up domestic reforms, is deemed an effective approach to integrating into the global economy. The partnership with the Tennessean countries, Brunei, Myanmar, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam, as well as India, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand would give China the flexibility to counter the American trade measures against its economy. China views the American shift toward the Pacific region, as Washington increases its influence through economic activities and through military and political cooperation, in addition to a rise in anti-China rhetoric, as a major threat to its sovereignty. The history of China's dreams of ending U.S. dominance started in the late 1990s with a book, Unrestricted Warfare, written by Chinese generals Liang Chao and Wang Shangsu. The main idea is that China can defeat the U.S., despite it being technologically superior and a more developed country, by avoiding traditional means of warfare. It proposed a variety of means that could be used to defeat the U.S., including lawfare, economic warfare, and network warfare. The book had a big impact in the U.S. and, nearly 20 years after its publication, we can see that America and its Western allies have adopted many ideas of unrestricted warfare, developing them in accordance with new opportunities, technological breakthroughs, and the peculiarities of the modern world. The trade war launched by the Trump administration is being used as leverage and an instrument of exercising power, rather than for protectionism of the American economy. The aggressive rhetoric against China and exchange of tariff hikes on certain products and goods are raising the heat in bilateral relations between Beijing and Washington. The U.S. is officially considering China a threat to its national interests. In keeping with Asian traditions, China is keeping its door open for talks until the very last moment, but it is unlikely this generosity will be appreciated by the U.S. Taking into account that the two powers have the same perceptions of how the world must be shaped, their alliance is promising to be fruitful and will cause many headaches in Washington. Maria Dubovikova understanding that the U.S. has practically declared war on China using non-military means will bring Russia and China closer together. Taking into account that the two powers have the same perceptions of how the world must be shaped, their alliance is promising to be fruitful and will cause many headaches in Washington. Both China and Russia have repeatedly declared that they are trying not to mix politics and economics, but are trying to form a new kind of relations. There is therefore an urgent need to reset relations and establish permanent channels of communication based on the interests of both countries. Russia and China have in recent years demonstrated agreement in the UN on many issues, including Syria, to the great disappointment of the US. But China-Russian cooperation in Syria goes far beyond the hall of the UN Security Council, as they successfully cooperate on the ground. China has deployed its limited special forces contingency to back the Syrian army and is active on many fields nowadays without the need for pompous announcements on its philosophy and foreign policy approaches. China and Russia opposed the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system on the Korean Peninsula, as it is deemed to be jeopardizing their national security and damaging the strategic balance in the region. The decision to deploy the Terminal High Altitude Area of Defense THAAD, system is part of the global anti-missile shield that Washington wants to serve U.S. superiority. The move, which was said to be for protecting South Korea from North Korea, is undoubtedly directed against both China and Russia. At the same time, Russia and China have merged their satellite tracking systems into one global navigation giant. Russia now awaits a visit by the Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs Wang Yi, who postponed a trip to Moscow last week. In the framework of the growing U.S.-China tensions, this visit will boost Sino-Russian cooperation. The agenda promises to be huge and will cover most fields of bilateral and global interest. China's new defense minister Zhen Peng is already in Moscow and has declared that the visit by the Chinese delegation is aimed at showing the U.S. the strength of bilateral ties and cooperation between Moscow and Beijing. He explained that he made Russia his first port of call in his new role to demonstrate China's will to deepen the strategic cooperation between the two countries' militaries. 
Wei also stressed that China is ready to show scale agreement with Russia on most of the issues on the global agenda. Russia and China, despite their differences, are now moving closer together to counter the U.S. and reshape the world. Maria Dubovikova is a prominent political commentator, researcher and expert on Middle East affairs. Twitter, at Politblog Copyright 2017 Saudi Research